Bernanke has in secret spent hundreds of billions of dollars bailing out one group and not bailing out another group. I don't see anybody in the news media demanding the kind of transparency at the Fed that you would demand of every other aspect of the federal government. And I think it is corrupt and it is wrong for one man to have that kind of secret power. So, Congressman Paul, where do you come down on this? <laughs> <laughs> One thing I might, might say that uh, we have made some inroads on the Federal Reserve. Uh, we passed a bill last year. We got a partial, uh, uh, you know, audit of the Fed, and we've learned a whole lot. They were dealing in $15 trillion. Five trillion went overseas to bail out foreign banks. But you know what? Congress did a lot. I've worked on it for a good many years. But Bloomberg helped and Fox helped. They had court cases, Freedom of Information Act. And there are some even at this table who re didn't think auditing the Fed was such a good idea that we could call up the Fed and ask him and they would tell us what to do. I've been calling them up for 30 years and they never tell me. But we're getting to the bottom of it. But if you want to understand why we have a problem, you have to understand the Fed. Because the cause comes from the business cycle. We shouldn't be asking what to do exactly with the recession. Obviously, we have to deal with that, but you can't solve, you can't cure the disease if you don't know the cause of it. And the cause is the booms. When there are booms and they're artificial, whether it's the CRA or whether it's the Fed Easy Credit, when you have bubbles, whether it's the NASDAQ or whether it's the housing bubbles, they burst. And when they do, you have to have corrections, and that's what we're dealing with. And we can do this by building coalitions and not sacrificing any principles. Juliana? Thank you, Chair. Let me go to housing. Um, what would you do? Uh, would you get the federal government out of housing? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's no need to look at no uh, Freddie, the, no Freddie Mac, no Fannie Mae, nothing. The, uh, the, the no, you, 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 that's where the distortions come. That's where the moral hazard comes from. That's where the malinvestment it, it overbuilt. It was predictable. You talked about what economists uh, we should look to, and unfortunately, we've been living with Keynesian economics uh, for many many decades. And everybody who was right about predicting the bubbles were Austrian economists. They said they were coming. And yet, they're also saying, and I agree with them, that everything that we're doing right now is wrong. So what we did with the housing bubble, yes, we had too many houses. It was glaring in our face. The bubble was doomed to burst, and it came because of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Easy Credit, and also Community Reinvestment Act. So uh, who, who got into trouble? The people who did the speculating, the Wall Street, the derivatives market? They got the bailout. They got privileges. So what happened to the middle class? They lost their jobs. They lost their houses. This whole system is all messed up. And you're, what I hear here is just tinkering with the current system and not looking at something new and different. And it's a free market economy without a Federal Reserve system, with sound money. If you don't have that, you're going to continue with the bubble. And this propping up this debt and keeping the correction, you need the correction. You need right. to get rid of the malinvestment investment in the debt. The debt Fine. is the burden on the economy. All right, we'll be back. Take a break and be right back. Stay with us from Dartmouth, Hanover, New Hampshire. <laughs> Congressman Paul. Since the uh, Federal Reserve is the engine of inflation, creates the business cycle, produces our recessions and our depressions, the Federal Reserve obviously is a very important issue. And fortunately tonight we have a former uh, pr uh, director of the Federal Reserve at Kansas City. So I have a question for Mr. Kane. Uh, Mr. Kane, uh, in the past you've been rather critical of any of us who would want to audit the Fed. You said uh, you've used pretty strong terms uh, that uh, uh, we were ignorant and that uh, we didn't know what we were doing. And therefore, there was no need for a Fed audit anyway, because if you had one, you're not going to find out anything because everybody knows everything about the Fed. But now that we have found and we've gotten an audit, we have found out an awful lot on how special businesses get, you know, bailed out Wall Street, the banks and special companies, foreign governments. And, and you said that you advise those of us who are concerned and you belittled, you say, call up the Federal Reserve and just ask them to get Question. the PR person. So do you still stick by this, that this is, a, uh, this is frivolous, or do you think it's very important? 64% of the American people want uh, a full audit of the Fed on a regular basis. Mr. King, first of all, you have misquoted me. 
I did not call you or any of your people ignorant. I don't know where that came I'll from. I'll get it for you. All right. Now, so you got to be careful of the stuff that you get off the internet because that's just not something that I have said. <laughs> Secondly, when I served on the board of the Federal Reserve in the 1990s, we didn't do any of the things that this Federal Reserve is doing. I don't agree with the actions of this Federal Reserve. I don't agree with the actions that have been undertaken by Ben Bernanke. We didn't have a $14 trillion national debt to prop up with some of the actions that they are taking. And I have also said, to be precise, I do not object to the Federal Reserve being audited. I simply said, if someone wants to initiate that action, go right ahead. It doesn't bother me. So you've, I've been misrepresented in that regard. I don't have a problem with the Federal Reserve being audited. It's simply not my top priority. My top priority is nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Governor Perry. <laughs>But people who say, well, we ought to audit the Federal Reserve because we don't know enough about it. Well, here's the advice I've given to people who are worried about an audit of the Federal Reserve. Call them up and ask them if you can stop by and have one of their PR people or one of their public relations people explain to you how the Federal Reserve operates. I think a lot of people are calling for this audit of the Federal Reserve because they don't know enough about it. There's no hidden secrets going on in the Federal Reserve, to my knowledge. And I tell people, you know, we've got 12 Federal Reserve banks. F you find out which district you're in, call them up and go from there. We don't need to waste money with another commission or an audit that's not necessary. Because, folks, we got a lot of other problems we need to worry about. You're listening to the Neil Bortz Show, and this is Herman Cain. This is your official. Mr. Cain, you disapprove of Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, and we all know that your priority is 999. But one of the most important appointments that you're going to have to make your first year, should you be president, would be Fed Chairman. So which Federal Reserve Chairman over the last 40 years do you think has been most successful and might serve as a model for that appointment? Alan Greenspan. Why? because that's when I served on the board of the Federal Reserve in the early 1990s. And the way Alan Greenspan oversaw the Fed and the way he coordinated with, the way he coordinated with all of the Federal Reserve banks, I think that it worked fine back in the early 1990s. Now, on that same point, I have already identified uh, two candidates which I cannot give their names, to replace Mr. Bernanke in anticipation of having that responsibility. We must narrow the mission of the Fed first. I don't believe in ending the Fed. I believe we can fix the Fed by getting that mission refocused on monetary price stability, and I have candidates in mind that will help us do So you have two appointments waiting in the wings for for 2013, for that when his uh, yes. term is up, 2014. Yes, I have two candidates waiting in the wings. How about a hint? To take yeah. that job, uh, I got to keep them confidential. Okay, Congressman Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true insider. <laughs> um, no, uh, Alan Greenspan was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> Washington, liberals and conservatives said he kept interest rates too low too long. Of course, the solution was lower them even more, and they think that's going to solve our problem. But if I had to name one person that did a little bit of good, uh, and that was Paul Volcker. He at least knew how to end uh, or help, you know, end the inflation. But uh, of course, uh, with my position that I don't think highly of the Federal Reserve, and I think we should have sound money, and we shouldn't have somebody deciding what the interest rate should be and how much money supply we should have. I mean, nobody satisfies me, but uh, certainly Alan Greenspan uh, has ushered in the biggest bubble, and what did we do? We've continued the same thing, doing the same thing. We think the inflation uh, of under Alan Greenspan was bad, so we're trying to solve the problem by inflating even further. So Bernanke compounds the problem. He's inflating twice as fast as, as Greenspan was, but uh, Green 
Green, Greenspan uh, caused so much trouble, and he used to believe in the gold standard. I think he's coming around to that, uh, and before he retires, he'll write his, uh, his bi biography and explain why he's coming back to the gold standard. I want to go from a gold standard to a small business person. I just want to add one quick thing, you know, uh, uh, Dodd-Frank obviously is a disaster. It's estimated it's going to cost a, tri a trillion dollars. I think one of the reasons we're not getting anywhere and we're not getting anywhere in Washington, it's, it's a partisan fight, it's a fight over power because Sarbanes-Oxley, which was done by the Republicans, it cost a trillion dollars too. It's repealed that too. I mean, if you look at what we've done as Republicans, we have caused a lot of problems. To say it's all in these past two years, I mean, I think that is so misleading. That's why the American people are sick and tired of listening to the politics. Right, I want to bring my colleagues in, right. Karen. Governor Perry. Congressman Paul. My motivation, my goals has always been to promote liberty, believing that's what made America great. If we want prosperity, if we want peace, we understand what the cause of liberty is all about. And we have to understand that a free market system and sound money gives us the prosperity. And it also is the humanitarian uh, program, because once you get into the welfare state and the social state, uh, it all backfires. So if you care about people, you believe in liberty, that's what made America great, that's what I want to restore. Senator Santorum.